Hey guys, welcome back. The last few months I wasn't really able to make new videos, I was really busy and had a lot of stuff to do, but now I've got time to make new videos and the first video I would like to make is disassembly of this old laser printer. I would like to show you the basic principle first and then proceed the complete disassembly. So to understand the basic principle I will show you the toner section of a laser printer first. So these are all the toner cartridges. We have black, blue, red and yellow cartridges. These can easily be removed just like that. You'll find a, a mechanism for this roll over here. Don't touch it when you remove such a um, cartridge. Don't touch the roll over here. It has a fine powder on it. Um, this is black powder. We have blue powder and this powder um, is part of the magic. And now we get to the second uh, secret or second important part of the laser printer and that is the photosensitive photo roll. This thing is amazing. What basically happens is when you want to, to print a text a laser will engrave the text on this photosensitive roll and all parts that got touched by the laser will be conductive. And this is really important and I will show you um, on the whiteboard. So the most important part of a laser printer is this photosensitive roll. Wherever the laser hits the roll it gets conductive. So the way it works is really simple. Let's say this is our photosensitive roll and we've got a laser diode over here. The laser diode emits a laser light and engraves the text we want to print onto the photosensitive roll. Only in the area where the laser light hits the roll it actually gets conductive. So let's say the photosensitive roll moves into this direction. It then will go over the uh, roll from the cartridges where the color powder is uh, coming from. So we have the cartridge roll with the colored powder on top. And the way it works is really simple. We have a positive charge on the photosensitive roll and we've got a negative charge on the toner roll. So all the color particles move over from the toner to the photosensitive roll, but only in the area where the laser hit the photosensitive roll, because only there it's conductive. It then will move over again in this direction and we will have paper going this direction and another roll over here. So keep in mind the photosensitive roll still has a positive charge and this other roll that is underneath the paper gets a negative charge, not a positive, negative. Then all the powder that is sitting on the surface then moves to the paper. The paper moves along and gets in between another two rolls. But these rolls, they get heated up to temperatures between 70 degrees Celsius to 180 degrees Celsius. And the powder then binds to the paper because it's basically some kind of a plastic material. It melts and permanently binds to the paper. And that is the basic principle how a laser printer works. But it's actually much more difficult. You have to keep in mind that there has to be some kind of a grid array in this roll because we want to be able to not only mix colors but also to get colors really close to each other. I will not go into much more detail than that. I think this is enough to understand the basic principle. Now let's proceed disassembling the printer further. I went ahead and put on some gloss because in the last part of this video uh, that I just showed 
I got a lot of the powder on my hands and this can't be really healthy and also it, it discolors the skin. As far as I can see over here, there's nothing else I can remove. But what is really interesting um, is the front part over here. Let me grab a toner. They are in like this. I just set it over here. And you see these black things, they are button, buttons. They go over here and if they are triggered, the printer knows that there is a certain cartridge, a certain color inserted. And if it's not pressed, there's no cartridge. And these contacts over here, I don't know what they are for, but as I said, the roll of the cartridge has to rotate and has to change its charge. But when we take a look at the cartridge, we will also see that there is some metal contact. This could be additional contacts, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the only contacts that are for sure are these four over here. So this will be also interesting to take a look inside of the front part. There are four screws. Well, guess what? I will re remove the front part first. So let me grab a screwdriver and I will strip down this part. Okay, so let's see. Remove the plastic. Something. Okay. Need another screwdriver. And there we go. There's a small cable, so I can't really remove it. And we've got a small PCB. Yeah, that's only for the contacts. Let's see. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I did not expect that. Let's remove the connector. And that's the PCB. How this works is we've got this assembly over here. A small spring. Can you see that? A small spring and this metal part on top. So if the spring gets pressed down, it presses onto these metal contacts. So we got a whole bunch of these in the front part. Oh, okay. Now I'm a bit... Okay, so I was wrong. This is not like buttons to know whether or not a, um, a cartridge is there. I don't know what this is for. There's no purpose. Honestly, what are these for? I'm so sorry guys, but my phone constantly overheated and I'm not sure what footage I can use from the disassembly. But now it cooled back down and I found something really interesting. So on the other side, I removed this board and uh, got this motor and the power supply. And I thought that was it. But when I opened up the other side, something really, really interesting came to light this board over here this is the high voltage driver board for the printer so how this works i already told you that but to do that they need high voltage and they specifically made this board the high voltage side and that's really cool so remember these pins that we saw on the front side underneath the cover they have the same kind of pins with longer springs going inside of the printer and they make contact with all of these uh, same type of connectors that we found on the small board when we look inside we find them 
on this side there are a lot of pins sticking out and that what was what I was talking about earlier when I thought there might be a contact on the side and I didn't see it right away and, and I still don't to be honest let me see how does this this needs to go like this makes contact over here oh I see so oh, I just grabbed the powder I removed the glass because not only was my smartphone overheating but I was too now I've got this stuff on my hands so these metal pins they make contact to this gold part over here and the metal part I was suspecting to be some kind of contact so I now have to clean my hands and I'm going ahead disassemble everything without the smartphone because now it's a bit well boring I've now extracted everything from the old laser printer the only thing is left is plastic material that gets thrown away but there are still components like this gearbox that I have to disassemble to extract all the gears that I will definitely keep I'm so sorry but my smartphone died again and I'm not sure what I captured of the disassembly of the gearbox but that shouldn't be a big problem I've got a lot of gears and this was also not really interesting I will show you the gears later but now this is amazing so what I found inside of this laser box is we have a PCB over here with a laser diode shooting a laser light through two lenses and a um, metal with a really small opening so the laser light that is not bundled has some like spreading and they have just a tiny hole in this metal material and two lenses to really focus the laser and we also have a photo sensitive um, sensor over here with another lens in front and the interesting part is this assembly over here so this is a really precise stepper motor and if I tilt the whole assembly and we take a look under here and I rotate it slightly I'm not sure can you see that yeah you should be able to see it there's a squared material that reflects light I hope you can see the reflection I'm not sure but we have a uh, like a uh, mirror with four edges under here so depending on the angle this motor is aligned the laser light shoots out through this lens over here into this reflective material that reflects the laser light downwards to this opening which then uh, writes something onto the photosensitive roll and also a portion of this light gets reflected to the sensor so they have not only a really precise way of getting the laser perfectly aligned but also some sort of uh, sensing is going on that tells the exact alignment so it tells where the laser is and maybe even how strong it is so some sort of regulation is going on over here and this is really I'm, I'm not going to disassemble this part I'm just get, going to close it back up and I will take a close look on this uh, between videos and maybe I can do something awesome with it if I disassemble it I completely destroy this awesome assembly so I'm not going to do that and I will keep it as it is and the last part that needs to be disassembled is the heating element finally I'm done everything is assembled except for the laser assembly but as I said this is just too awesome I'm not going to destroy it right now I will keep it and uh, well think about something that I could use it for and now I will go ahead and show you all the parts I've got out of the laser printer so obviously I've got a whole bunch of cables not all of them are still usable this is one I will definitely keep next I've got a whole bunch of screws also 
a whole bunch of springs, all different kinds of springs and made from different materials. I've got pins, the contact pins with springs, a whole bunch of these weird uh, things. They Somewhere within the laser printer they were called gears. For me this is pretty much useless except for this one. This is not a this is a motor and it's not a gear, but they go into the trash. Got a whole bunch of light barriers, definitely keeping those. I've got these, what I thought would be um, some fuses, um, so um, thermal fuses, but I'm not 100% sure. Then we got the small motor and a definite keeper, the big stepper motor with its own drive driver. I've got a power supply. This is a really well constructed one and I will make a different video just about the power supply. I've got the laser assembly. As I said, I will keep it as it is. This heating element, this is just awesome looking. It's a evacuated tube with some, I think this is nichrome wire and it's contact points, definitely a keeper. Different kinds of rolls and shafts and everything. I will keep all of them for now. I've got a whole bunch of gears, different sizes. Definitely keeping those. I was really uh, interested in getting some gears because I don't have any. Then we have the last two pieces. I've got this PCB over here with the main controller, USB interface and a whole bunch of connectors. And I'm currently thinking to repurpose the whole PCB as it is, to repurpose the controller, I have to look up the datasheet and maybe I'm able to uh, repurpose the microcontroller on the PCB as it is, because all of these connections, they might be usable for other situations, otherwise I would have to remove uh, needed components and rebuild everything. But if I am able, to repurpose it as it is, that would be awesome. And the last thing is the high voltage driver and this also will stay as it is because as of right now I don't have a way to get high voltages and I will take a look at how everything works and then maybe make uh, this well, use this for high voltage applications so I need a high voltage for some experiment or something. Uh, this will also stay as it is normally. If this wasn't that awesome and well constructed, I would just go ahead and remove all the components that are of any interest for me. And that's it for this small teardown. I hope you liked it and if you did, please leave a like. Other than that, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!